Hey what's up guys, OSG here with another video that questions the reviews that we all hung off when we were kids. In the last two videos I covered the mistakes made by Zap64 for the Commodore 64 and now it's time to look at the Amiga. For me the magazine of choice was always Amiga Power, so I have been looking through them for the last two weeks to see if there were any times that the reviewers scored the games low, when really they were ok at the great games. It was a little tougher than the Zap64 videos because there was an abundance of overinflated and underscored games in that magazine, but I found 10 that I would say were scored way too low in Omega Power. Also, before we start, I'd like to give a huge thanks to CodeTapper for this customizable Omega crap draw that he's done for me. Thanks, dude. Okay, so exclamation's over, let's take a look at 10 Omega games that were scored way too low by Omega Power. Kicking us off in 10th place we have Benefactor. This is one absolute classic on the Omega, but maybe not a lot of people have played it after a very mediocre score of 57% that it received in issue 39 of Omega Power. The reasons for the low score were that it has long, complex levels. Yeah, what you would want from a puzzle game, and no restore points so if you die you have to go through it all again. Go through what? It's mostly single screens, so really for me dying isn't a bad thing. Then he goes on to talk about the pointless small graphics. The graphics are great on this and are very like modern indie games now. I could go on but it seems that when it all comes down to it, it got a low score because it was hard and played by someone who clearly had sight issues. But as I've said earlier, who wants an easy puzzle platform game? I'd rate this 85% given a difference of 28%. Ninth place is taken by Alien Breed Tower Assault, so as we go through this list we will see a few Team 17 games, and I'll just let you know that the guys from Team 17 and Omega Power weren't the best of friends, to the point that Team 17 stopped sending games to the magazine for reviews. Whether or not this is why they give low scores to some of their games we do not know, but this was reviewed in issue 45 by Jonathan Nash and he gave it a scandalous score of only 46%. The thing is that they scored the previous two games above 80, so this low score can't really be justified as for me this is the best out of the three. The other thing that I've noticed in these reviews is that they are complaining about the game's difficulty and yes this game is hard but who doesn't want a challenge? I'd give this game around 84% given a difference of 38%. European Champions is in 8th position. This game was reviewed in issue 47 of Omega Power and scored a substandard 39%. Now I'll start by saying that this is by no means up to the standard of sensible soccer or kickoff, but it's still really good. The graphics are actually better than both those games for me, and the gameplay is pretty good too. I especially like the goal replays when the view changes. Anyway, the reason for the low score is that it looks bad and plays even worse. And now I'm going to tell you that I don't think this guy even played this game, which really pisses me off, because he says you can play the game in two views, overhead showing too little on the screen and badly animated players, or the more friendly side on view which improves things a bit and lets you put passes together, but it doesn't improve on the graphics. Am I missing something here, because that's just utter bullshit. First of all, the side on view graphics are great, but the more annoying thing and the thing that makes me think the reviewer hadn't cleared it is that there's no side on view during gameplay. The side on view is just for action replays, meaning that the whole review is a load of shit, which really pisses me off. Anyway, I'd score this game 80%, given a difference of 41% and the reviewer should have been sacked for lying. In 7 we have ATR All Terrain Racing. Another Team 17 game here, and it was reviewed in issue 48, and I would say that this was the blow that made the feud between Omega Power and Team 17 escalate. There had been some reasonably low scores prior, but given this game 38% is a total piss take. He says the only good thing about this game is that the cars move and go room, and then goes on to completely slate the game in all aspects of gameplay, saying not enough shortcuts, well yeah they are shortcuts, you just gotta be good at racing games to get through them, as they are really tight. And then says, not enough road in view. Again, once you know the track and know what to expect, you can anticipate the shortcuts. He compares it to roadkill and micro machines, and yes, it's not as good as roadkill, but I'd say it's on par with micro machines, and I'd give it a solid 79%, and that's a difference of 41%. Sixth place is taken by Golden Axe. 
This was reviewed in issue 14 of Omega Power and I was astonished when I saw it only got 35%. We saw in the overrated C64 video that the piss poor C64 version scored high. Well that truly makes this review null and void then. Ok so this game did get mixed reviews from the other mags but no one put it below 50% and most put it above 80%. In the review the guy admits that he was the only one in the office who didn't like Golden Axe. Well, why let him review it then? He then goes on to say, horrifically tedious trudger with pretty graphics and not much else. Certainly nothing you would actually call gameplay anyway. I'm pretty certain that the rest of the office would have given this at least in the 70s a budget price, but for me, 35%. Well that explains it. I'm sure anyone who has ever worked in an office has come across the office dickhead who wants to go against the grain. I'll say no more. My score would have been 78%, giving a difference of 43%. Rome AD92 The Pathway to Power is in 5th position. This mouse controlled adventure game was reviewed in issue 49 and scored a below par 45%. Previously it was reviewed and scored a still low 59%. So this is a truly great adventure game that has great bits of humour. The graphics are nice and very populous like, even though it's a totally different genre. It's a game that has to be given time more and I think that it's something the reviewers didn't give it. But bear in mind this is the same guy that reviewed European Champions when he obviously hadn't played it so you do the math. It's not too well known but if you like this genre then defo check this out and I give it a score of 89% which is a difference of 44% from a useless review. In 4th place we have Elvira 2 The Jaws of Cerberus. Now this one is baffling if you ask me. I mean I can't quite think what the reviewer was thinking in issue 13 of Omega Power when he gave this game 33%. I mean come on, I think the reviewer totally missed the point in this game as he said it was dull, boring and not frightening. Which yeah it isn't, but as a kid it was, as it had a great eerie atmosphere. And don't forget why we bought this, it was all about the lovely Elvira and they had some lovely great scenes with her in. The game is beautiful to look at and you can interact with loads of stuff so I don't know how anyone could put this down. His score whether he's a fan of the genre or not is a joke and the more I read for reviews the more I think that some reviewers scored the game's low just to book the trend which is stupid. I rate this game 82% giving it a difference of 49%. Third place is taken by Beach Volley. This was reviewed in issue 5 of Mega Power and I'm disgusted at the score they give it of only 28%. Me and my mates absolutely love this game. Yeah, it's hard to get used to at first but once you do it's amongst my favourite multiplayer games on the system. It's a short review in the budget section as this was a re-release of the Ocean Classic on the Hit Squad label but the guy didn't like it at all. I think maybe he was alone when he played it because it's so much fun to play in a group and has a quirkiness like half naked ladies etc which were always fun to pick out when you were 14 year old. He did say it was hard which I admit it is at first but once it clicks it's truly great no messing about fun especially when you're with your mates and I give us a score of 78% giving a difference of 50% but really love or hate it it's never a 28% game. Amber Moon is in second place. Reviewed in issue 51, this game scored a staggeringly low 30%, which is bonkers. Okay, so as I said in the past, when reviewing, you really should try and match the genre to someone who likes that kind of game, as really this game won't be for everyone, but anyone who likes fantasy RPGs, this is a sweet game. I agree with some things that the reviewer says, for example, yeah, the overhead Zelda sections of the game are very jerky, but they still look nice, but I don't agree with the remarks he makes about the 3D sections being poor, and I also don't mind the combat sections either. The thing about this game is though that it's an Amiga exclusive and is beautiful and absolutely massive so will entertain the right person for a long time but you've got to be in it to appreciate it. I score this game 83% would have been higher if the jerkiness wasn't present and that's a difference of 52%. And now in first place we have Dreamweb. This was reviewed in issue 46 of Amiga Power and I can only think that the review was on drugs when he gave it a lower than low 24%. To put that in some context, that would mean on Lemon that this would have been in the 2 out of 10 bracket and quite frankly that's a load of shit as this game rocks. I actually included this game in my recent best Amiga point and click video as it's so good. So why the low score? Let's see what he said. Well, he just seems to think it's boring from a review. 
complain about having to solve puzzles etc which is fundamentally what the game is about. I mean if it wasn't you would just have to walk from start to finish not worrying about inventory or things to use on certain objects. For me though this game pulls you in fast and even with the tedious bits you still keep playing for the great atmosphere and anticipation of what is next. I rate this game 83% giving a massive discrepancy of 59% from the review score. I tell you what though, it's lucky some reviewers knew what they were talking about or this magazine would have been only good for wiping your arse with. Ok that's it for this first Amiga Power video, I'm already on with the overrated games video but it's not set in stone yet so if you have any examples of games on the Amiga that were grossly overrated in Amiga Power let me know in the comments below. Please remember to drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content and if you like what I do and want to support the channel more like this bunch of scallywags going up the screen right now get on over to my Patreon channel and get your name on the end credits and Amiga crack draw like in this video as well as video requests and more in the future. Till next time this is OSG signing out.